They're vultures. They're just rats with wings. It's every man and every bird for himself. They're hungry. They're always hungry. They will pretty much eat anything that they can swallow. They're crashing the party, they're gonna eat, and then they're gonna go. They're on a mission to steal as much food as they can. And you know what? My mission is to stop them. They're probably the most intelligent creature on Earth. It's survival of the smartest. You know, fans are fickle, but birds, they're always here. It wouldn't be the ballpark without them. Every home game, they're here. Whether it's sunny or foggy, out here in the bleachers, chowing down on hot dogs and garlic fries. Some of them have been coming to Giants games since the team was at Candlestick. And no, we're not talking about the fans. We're talking about the birds. Let's go, Giants! The sounds and smells of the ballpark are back. Giant cheers, giant tacos, and of course, the best garlic fries I've ever had in the world. And whether the Giants win or lose, there's a universal truth here at the ballpark. If you drop a crumb, the birds are gonna come. And sometimes they don't even wait that long. Flew down, took it right out of my hands, mid-bite. But when did it all begin? The first games we ever had here, they were here both days. They showed up the day the stadium opened. Yep. Meet George Costa. I've been with the Giants since the 1989 season. Back then, the Giants were playing here. We zoom into Candlestick Park. It was the year this World Series broadcast was interrupted. The Oakland A's take, take, I'll tell you what, we're having an earthquake. By an earthquake. I remember everything in detail about it. And birds in that moment were not what I was thinking about. But since the Giants moved here in 2000, he's had to think about birds a lot. I found chicken bones on the field. And I'm thinking, how are these chicken bones getting on the field? Are people throwing them? Watch the top right portion of your screen. You'll see the chicken tender drop in right as there it is. The answer fell straight out of the sky on live TV. I'm not picking it up. You pick it up. I'm not picking it up. They were dropping them. They would eat them or fight over them, and then they'd drop them. And then that solved that mystery. <laughs> Another caper in a series of whodunits with only one culprit. And each year, the problem got worse. How about that shot from our center field camera? Look. Stealing food and attention from the fans and the announcers. French fries, hot dogs, popcorn. Savages out there. It turns out science has a perfectly good explanation for this. Breeding season and baseball season are kind of the same thing? They are at the same time, yes. Cover your eyes, kids. It's time for the grown-ups to have a little talk about nature. You see, while the Giants are off at spring training, the birds have something else on their tiny brains. On a warehouse roof a few blocks from the ballpark, the circle of life begins. Some studies have actually shown that gulls will increase the time that they spend feeding on human food during their breeding season. So while they might otherwise be out fishing for seafood, once baseball starts, they see the food. They see food. And they seem to know exactly when they can find it. They're not here when we don't play. It's like they know the damn schedule. Devoted fans will tell you they start to show up in the seventh inning. Maybe it's when we sing, take me out to the ball game. <laughs> We bought them something way better than that. I would like to order a garlic fries and a hot dog to give to the seagulls. That's very nice of you. I mean, what the heck? I'm in a generous mood today. What can I say? Wow, those birds really are dining first class. As the first birds began circling, we laid out a meal fit for a king. I actually made this sign just for them. I don't know, you think they can read? And when the game ended, here they come. The feeding frenzy began. At first, they were polite. They took turns, but not for long. And then it happened. One of them grabbed the hot dog, flung it to the ground, and in this mad scuffle of feathers, it disappeared. This might be a good time to introduce our feathered friends. We call these birds seagulls. What exactly are they? Well, seagull is actually a little bit of a misnomer. You see, not all gulls are the same. This one with the pink legs is a western gull. They live near the ocean. But the hot dog thief with its yellow legs, that's a California gull, and they live near the bay. We're gonna be kayaking out in order to get there. The San Francisco Bay Bird Observatory is responsible for counting the California gulls every spring. Back in 1980, there were no gulls, and it has exploded to 
a recent peak of around 55,000 breeding birds. That is the tripod that I'm sitting on. Carefully paddling out with all that camera gear. You're looking good. Thanks, I'm just faking it. <laughs> I had no idea how unwelcome we would be. They will go after you with the beak, so you do need to be careful. Though we'll never know for sure, there's a possibility that hot dog wound up here on this little island. Some 10 to 20,000 gulls build nests and bring back food to their newborn chicks every baseball season. One egg. One egg. California gulls mate with the same partner every year. They can lay up to three eggs, and by the middle of May, these adorable chicks are starting to hatch. Two chicks! Their populations are just doing incredibly well. On this island far away from predators, they make nests out of our garbage and meals out of our leftovers. The gulls have really adapted incredibly well to living in an urban environment. And sure enough, remember how they laid waste to those garlic fries? <laughs> One of the nests we saw had some recently hatched chicks in it and also a little pile of french fries that their parents had left for them. But how do they know where the fries are? I would just love to do an experiment where we tracked a couple of birds. It turns out somebody has. Part of my research program is to understand where they go. Scott Schaefer is a marine ecologist at San Jose State. I use small little tracking tags that I tape to the tail feathers. He found some gulls have the same lunch routine every day. This particular bird flew from Alcatraz into uh, what we think is a dumpster behind a delicatessen in the tenderloin. And it did that. I think five different times. Another enjoyed taking rides on a garbage truck. That bird actually did it twice. Down the freeway, crossed over the Bay Bridge, stayed overnight, and then it flew all the way back to its nest the next day. As for the ballpark, they're still trying to catch one in the act, but they speculate it's the same gulls over and over again. Right in front of us. This bird left leg has a band on it. With bands like this, they've learned gulls can live 20 years or more. Some of the birds that we've recited in past years have been almost 40 years old. So there are birds alive today that saw the Giants play at Candlestick. That's right, yep. Those birds had life all figured out until last year. No fans meant no food, and the only birds that showed up were these plastic cutouts in the upper deck. Now, after a year off, the fans are back to their old tricks. You're a bum, David! <laughs> and so are the birds. A bird pooped on my hand. It's so gross. And if the game goes too long, watch out. By the 10th inning, these announcers were talking more about birds than baseball. The seagulls. They do not get extra innings. No. Turns out they have sort of an internal clock. What happens when daylight saving time happens? Oh, they get confused. They, they're all jacked up. They show up at the wrong time. They're like, hey, why the hell are you people still playing baseball? I'm hungry. The Giants have tried scaring them away by playing a recording of a bird in distress. That scared the birds and children and adults. They brought in a red-tailed hawk named Bruce Lee. He scared the birds, the crows and the pigeons. The gulls, not so much. But as much as they love a good cha-cha bowl. The nachos are one of their favorites. You know what gulls hate? The cha-cha slide. Slide to the left. Turns out there's one part of the song that gets them to slide right out of the ballpark. It goes literally like, everybody clap your hands. And it works. Yes. Costa says keeping the peace between the fans <laughs> and the birds helps families have generations of great memories here at the ballpark, though he didn't specify which families. When the chicks are big enough to fly, a family of gulls might actually head to the ballpark with their uh, young fledgling chick. So it could be mom and dad taking the kids to their first ball game. <laughs> it's possible. One, two, three, 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 three.